G'day there. Hi, I'm Glenn Morris from the Smart Energy Lab, and today in Toolbox Tech Talk, I've got Jerry Manane here. Now, Jerry, Jerry, um, I haven't known you a long time, but I've got to know you pretty quickly. In fact, you know, we've hung out in the kitchen a fair bit and eaten some interesting food together. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Even History. something that I've never heard of, which is a, a, a Burmese dish with um, tea leaves and peanuts and spice. Absolutely, Le Pet, it's on every Burmese table. Right, well, I'm a convert. Right. <laughs> but it does need a Belgian beer to go with it. Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah. we'll work on that. And it is regularly consumed in, in Burma with a beer. <laughs> So you're here today to talk to me a bit about um, a new inverter battery system that you're introducing to the Australian market. Um, now, uh, first let's just start with the inverter, because there's two kind of things, there's the battery and the inverter. Tell me a bit about um, this inverter, what's, what's its name? Um, it's uh, Day. it's from uh, China. Um, the originally discovered in, in Burma when I was living there, trying to do initially telecoms work, but. Uh, given the market is saturated with telecoms. The one thing that Burma needs more than anything is power. Um, so uh, that's when I decided to get into the renewable energy market and was looking for products specifically to, um, to sell into Burma. I moved over there in 2017 and uh, yep, thought that uh, I was going to solar power Myanmar um, slash Burma. Um, but instead of that, the um, first COVID and then the coup, once the sh shooting started, then you know, I abandoned uh, any prospect really of continuing to do uh, business over there in general. And so given that I passionately believe in renewable energy, it's the future, uh, we had identified some good products so I figured that, oh well, I'll have to come back home and try and make a go of it selling what I believe is really viable products here in Australia. So you're actually a Melbourne boy? I'm a Melbourne boy, <laughs> but hope soon to be a Queensland boy. Oh my gosh, don't <laughs> tell me that. <laughs> Nothing gets Queensland, but it's just nice to have you local, so that's, yeah. that's cool. So you were introduced to um, the Day Inverter through your telco um, business in uh, Myanmar, um, and you learned a bit about the inverter. Um, so what can you tell me about Day? It's a brand that I'm not very familiar with. Look, it's, it's been around for quite a while. Um, most of the equipment they sell seems to be home branded. So it's sold in America under a different name. It's actually already sold in Australia um, as well under a brand name, um, a home brand name. But the, um, they've been around since 2007, started off with 30 million US. They're now worth about 530 million, so they have huge markets um, around the world and obviously particularly in, in China. Um, they seem very innovative, so from the research I've done and most importantly my uh, CTO um, has done, they, um, they have a very good product with innovative features. Yeah, so I mean, we've got one here at the lab. So, um, you know, we installed it, me and my assistant, uh, Niall, installed the uh, 12 kilowatt three phase unit here with the, um, the the battery system. We'll talk about the batteries in a minute. Uh, and so I've got to know it a little bit just in terms of the installation process and its um, basic features. But yes, I was impressed when you told me that this was a um, inverter with a 12 kilowatt rating, but with a peak power of double that for 10 seconds. That's correct. Yep. So it, it could be used in possibly um, in backup mode, but also maybe even in standalone. Is that possible? Absolutely. Yep. 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 Now, as a standalone inverter, one of the things that um, every installer asks is, um, can it start a generator? Well, it's actually quite unique, um, this particular inverter you're talking about, because um, as well as the, the double peak power, it's three phase, but actually can run on two. And the full 12 uh, kilowatts can 
be carried by the other two phases. Um, the, uh, it has a smart port. Um, it's programmable and it can be used for either input or output. So if you've got a generator, it's already pre-wired for you to connect up the genset. Um, if you've got um, AC solar, the, um, you can also feed that into the inverter. Um, and you can also program it to actually uh, dump power, like into something like a hot water service or whatever. So the functionality is programmable, but also when it's doing what is also programmable. So it's yeah. really flexible. So what I noticed was that um, uh, with most uh, multi-mode inverters, they'll have a grid port and a load port, but it's got a grid port, a load port, and a gen port. Now, tell me about the gen port. Well, that's, that's what I call the smart port. Um, like I say, fully programmable um, for additional inputs from gen sets or AC solar, and can also be programmed as a load port and uh, you can dump power. Wow, hang on, I didn't even realize that. So you've got a, a, a continuous load port and a controlled load port, That's which correct. really you, you're referring to as the smart port. Now when we say port, we mean three phase AC power. That's correct. Yeah, so it's three phase AC power up to what, the full power of the unit? That's correct. Wow, okay, so I, I jokingly refer to this as the ultimate preppers uh, in, uh, hybrid uh, inverter because you've got grid power, you've got battery power, you've got solar power, and you've got auto start generator capability all wired into the one unit. Yep, it's a very unique unit. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, the other thing that really impressed me was just uh, the fact that the integration as a whole unit with uh, you know the weatherproof cover. So. I noticed that the inverter is IP66, but it's inside an additional enclosure. Well, what's that about? Um, that's for just additional weather protection and the aesthetics. Right. I must admit, it looks like a pretty good unit. It does, and it partners well with the battery system it sits on top of. Was that an integrated design? Absolutely, that's the um, integrated design from the battery manufacturer. Um, obviously, they've cooperated with Day and uh, came up with that all in one unit. So um, this is a 12 kilowatt three phase uh, inverter, but it can do six kilowatts per phase unbalanced. That's correct. Up to a maximum total power of 12 kilowatts continuous. That's correct. So that's pretty interesting. I mean, the reason I like the sound of that is that uh, effectively five kilowatts is a very popular size for backup. Uh, and you might think 12 kilowatts three phase is actually three, four kilowatt inverters, but actually it's three six kilowatt inverters you just can't run them all at full power at the same time. Yep, that's correct. That's that's kind of cool. So as a as a uh, you know going back to that prepper thing, as a backup unit, it's really powerful. It is the um, the, the the carrying of the the six and six is in off grid mode. Mm -hmm. Perfect for the preppers. Um, yep. But actually, if it's grid connected, it's it can only carry five kilowatts per phase. So. The inverter itself, the DAE inverter, sits on top of a battery stack. Now, we installed this a few weeks ago. I must admit it was a very easy installation of batteries. Uh, there are a lot of stackable batteries these days, but this one was particularly easy. It was you know, inbuilt handles, 51 kilos, I think it was, total. Um, two of us could, you know, 25 kilos each is no big workout. Uh, and we could stack it, four of them, that gave us, what, 5.12 kilowatt hours each? That's correct. It, it, theoretically, it can go to eight, but Practically, because the inverter will be too high to touch, um, yeah, it would normally operate with four, probably five. Okay, so that's around 20 to 25 kilowatt hours of energy, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, that is. Um, and the, the, these batteries are from a company uh, with an interesting acronym name, so um, I have to look it up yeah. just to remind myself. So it's ZRPG. That's correct. Which I think is the region in green power. That is, yep, yeah, that's right. So tell me a bit about ZRPG. How did you come to uh, integrate with them? Well, it was almost actually the other way around. The, um, the ZRPG batteries uh, are also available, or oh, they're used in many South uh, East Asian countries, um, along with uh, Africa, the US and Europe. And they're used by telcos a lot. Um, so that gave us confidence that the batteries are pretty good based on telco requirements. Um, 
and certainly working with them, they've been amazing. Now they, uh, it was coincidentally that their all-in-one unit happened to use the day inverter because we'd already bought some day inverters back into Myanmar, even though we've never used the ZRPG. Jerry, the now I have trouble with the name, I must admit, but ZR. GP um, uh, batteries, so GP for green power, they, they, they're a standard battery module, what, 5.12 kilowatt hours. How much power That's can correct. you get out of them? And they'll, they'll put out five kilowatts. Per battery module. Per battery module. Right, so that's that's a 1C discharge. It is, and um, and you can double it for 10, for 10 seconds. Right, so do 2C <laughs> for 10 seconds. Uh, and combined with the day 12 kilowatt inverter, I mean, it only really need three batteries to give full power because that would be 15 kilowatts. That's correct. Yeah, or even just two and kind of sneak a bit over to 12 for 10 seconds. Right. Wow. Right. So, okay, so uh, you can ex you can have an expandable system. You could start with two battery modules, which would be 10.24 kilowatt hours. Um, how big can you go? With the inverter combined as the all-in-one unit, realistically, probably you're looking at four or five. Um, Theoretically, it's eight because when the battery is sold without the inverter, they stack eight high and then you can put them in parallel. Right, so wow, that's 40 kilowatt hours per stack. That's correct. And you can have multiple stacks onto the same DC bus. So you can get up to, what, that's 144 kilowatt hours, I think, total? Wow. Yep. Yeah. That, yeah. There's a lot of power there. It's a lot of power. So if you're doing a, a larger off-grid system, uh, it's possible to have multiple stacks of batteries, but can you have multiple inverters? Yes, you can. Right. Yeah. So that means we could actually just get a, a bunch of, you know, four or five unit bat module batteries with a day 12 kilowatt inverter, put multiple units of those and build something that could deliver, you know, 100 kilowatts or more. Absolutely. Wow. Yep. So it's, it's actually a unit that's very flexible from a small to large applications on grid or off grid with that wonderful generator input that's actually yeah. a smart port that can be a controlled load, can be a AC coupled solar. Now I found that interesting when you told me about that. Um, I actually haven't seen many inverters that do that. To the best of my knowledge, it's the only inverter that I'm aware of that does do it. Oh, there is one more, it's just over there, but I won't tell you about that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> But can it do the? Can it be a dump? No, no, <laughs> no. You so you've got you've got it there. Okay. Um, so it's it is a pretty unique feature. Uh, I mean, for 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 those who are not familiar, what we're talking about here is that normally when you AC couple an existing solar inverter to a new battery inverter, the the battery inverter needs to kind of know about that renewable generation. Otherwise, it doesn't know to charge its battery from it. So you have to put some CT, some current transformers, on the the, the conductors from that uh, AC coupled inverter. But in the case of the, the, the day, it's actually got its own dedicated port, which means it's measuring the uh, AC coupled solar coming in. And so it knows it can use renewables to charge its battery. You don't have to go and run CTs as well. So that's a bit of a plus. It actually makes the wiring a whole lot simpler. And for those installers used to those terribly cramped switchboards, you don't have to jam a whole bunch of CTs in there. So um, Jerry, I think it's a pretty nice feature. Um, have it all in the unit. Absolutely. Look, I. We um, pick, picked it obviously because, like I said, we believe we've got the quality, we believe it's reasonably unique, we believe we'll be very competitively priced and yeah, I reckon it's a winner. Cool. Uh, in terms of the battery chemistry, what, what sort of chemistry are those batteries? Lithium iron phosphate. Now that was a good bit of eye rolling there, <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah, so lithium iron or lithium ferrous phosphate, um, often referred to as the safest lithium. Uh, that, it's, so that's, it's a fairly common um, chemistry to have for residential battery systems. It's, it may be not as energy dense as say um, the nickel manganese cobalt, but it hasn't got that nasty C word in there, cobalt. So that's a big plus. Right. Yeah, none of those, uh, those nasty minerals that uh, uh, you know, we, we're trying to reduce the use of, so. That's a plus yeah. from the green power point of view. Right. Yeah, cool. Um, so I've just got a few notes here that I'll just refer to as we're going. That uh, in terms of the technical specifications, uh, what's the certification of the batteries? They're uh, UL 1973, Glenn, and of course that makes them even more rigorously tested, particularly for fire and what have you, than 
the normal standard certification. Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with UL 1973. For those who haven't heard of it, <laughs> it's a pretty ferocious test in terms of fire. Uh, the requirement is for compliance to UL 1973 or certification to it, which UL is a US-based company that does safety certif certifications. Uh, you have to put the battery in a pool of hydrocarbon, you know, let's think petrol, uh, and set fire to it for 20 minutes and then extinguish the fire and leave it for 24 hours. The battery should still be safe after 24 hours. Now, if that isn't a fire test, I don't know what is. I'd be more worried about my couch burning the house down than my battery. So it's good to hear it's got one of the highest levels of uh, safety testing. Yep, absolutely, just another advantage. Cool. So um, you've put together the day inverter with uh, the, the ZR um, GP battery modules and they've built an enclosure for you as an all-in-one solution. Will it be uh, listed on the CEC list as a, an approved all-in-one product? That's, we're working towards that right now. Okay, well that'll be great for installers because you know, of course there's some rebates that, that uh, attach to that which are nice to have, but also it's a sort of level of confidence of the quality of the product to get listed. Yeah. Yep, yeah, looking forward to that. Now, let's have a little look at the technical side of this battery. I know you've got some slides here and a little bit about the company, so let's run through that. Well, I reckon it's time for a beer. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good to me. <laughs> so you brought along a slide deck here, which is gonna help the audience understand the product range a bit better. Um, so first up, we've got the ZR GP battery, and it comes in a range of form factors, I see. The, um, yes, it's a, it's a really modular system, um, and it's the same five kilowatt 5.12 kilowatt hour battery in different forms, whether it be the wall mounted form, whether it be um, just stacked with batteries only, whether it's stacked together with the day inverter that we're, that makes it an all in one, or in whether it's in a 19 inch rack. Wow, so um, the day inverters come in a range of sizes too. I can see they go from, you know, your small resi systems up to large units. Absolutely, and uh, includes micro inverters, obviously three phase, single phase. Um, and you can, oh no, can take that back, there you go. There's some of the day. So they, so they make micro inverters as well. Micro inverters, okay. solar inverters hybrid inverters. And I can see they do a, a, a wide range of power ratings. So they do micro inverters. Interestingly, the, ch the micro inverters, as far as our um, PVRA standards has changed. What used to be um, a 350 watt limit for micro inverters is gone. We don't even talk about micro inverters in ASNZS 5033, the, the 2021 edition. We only talk about maximum input voltage. So as long as it's below 120 volts, uh, it's effectively uh, you know, exempt from some of the more rigorous requirements for isolation on the DC side. That means you can now start having larger micro inverters uh, on PV systems. And I see that they make a micro that's 2000 watts. I mean, geez, that's a big micro. It is, <laughs> I must admit they're, uh, and I'm not sure that there's anything else that big on the market. Nope, I, um, I, I can see a potential for, you know, that if you want everything on the roof, you don't want to have any DC cables running down through the building and you want to have a, a minimum number of power electronics in your roof, having a 2000 watt, I feel funny calling the micro inverter, but basically <laughs> yeah. an inverter that sits underneath the modules. Uh, that's a pretty interesting product. It so I, I look forward to learning more about that too. They do solar inverters from as small as single phase three kilowatts up to what, 100 kilowatts three phase. I'm just reading off the slide here because yep. <laughs> I don't remember all this stuff. And uh, with the hybrid inverters, uh, they've got both single phase and three phase units. They have, and the slide shows the uh, single phase being three to eight kilowatts, but there's a 16 kilowatt single phase inverter that's going to be released quite soon. Now that gets me uh, excited because PV systems are going up in size in Australia. Residential systems now, the average is eight kilowatts of PV. And right. so therefore, looking at the distribution curve, some people have got much bigger PV systems on their home than eight kilowatts. So having an inverter that can handle, you know, 10, 15, 16 kilowatts uh, and supply your home, and it can do it in backup as well. Absolutely. So Absolutely. 16 kilowatt single phase is coming. It's, yep, it'll be here soon. It's hot off the press. Absolutely, yep. yep. Cool, great. All right, sorry. So going back and then to the ZRGP batteries, um, that's an example of the, the, the wall mounted, the base, power base mate, 
um, and the commercial ones, both lo low and high voltage. Okay, and we hold that for a second. So um, you've actually got a, a small modular battery called, or it's wall mounted, called the PowerBase X1. That's correct. Um, I, I know I've got one here in a box, so I haven't yet uh, opened it up and had a good look at it. So it's a 48 volt battery nominal with five kilowatt hours of storage. It has, yep. And it can be used with other inverters. Absolutely. All right, so that's your kind of your smallest offer. And then you go to the PowerBase Mate, which is the stackable. Stackable and up to eight in uh, per stack, and then you can put multiple stacks. Yeah. There's also the commercial range, which uh, your 19 inch rack mount style, uh, those are still the same 5.12 kilowatt hour battery in a 19 inch rack mount. That's correct. And this is probably more your telco or your large off grid system. Absolutely, yeah. Right, so yeah, really covers it. And they I, even have high voltage as well. They do. Um, uh, and both the high voltage and the Pro Series can also have um, their own external cabinets. So you can have uh, multiple inverters and two sets, two racks of 19 inch, um, two, two 19 inch racks full of batteries. Right. Now, oh. this slide really shows that multi-function uh, feature, the, the smart port. The um, combinations, you've got them listed here as ORs. So you've got a critical load, critical load meaning it's backed up when the grid fails. Your common load, which is actually your switchboard itself, yep. not through the inverter. Um, you've got your generator input or AC so coupled solar or a smart load. That's three different modes that one AC port can operate in. That's correct. Yeah, wow. Um, programmable for function and programmable for time of day. Okay, because I noticed that there's quite a lot of um, you know, uh, digital control on the inverter itself. So it looks like you can input um, you know, trigger signals for it to do things like turn on hot water, turn on air con, Absolutely. turn on pool pump. Yeah, I mean, after all, really, if you've got a controlled load, it's like having a battery because it's going to need that energy. You might as well put it in there when you've got surplus. Absolutely, better than sending it back to the grid and getting very little for it. Yeah, I mean, it's all about um, self-use these days. That's Absolutely. where all the economics are. It's not about exporting to the grid. Yeah. Yeah, uh, cool. <laughs> well, um, that was really fascinating. Thanks, Jerry, for coming to talk to me about um, the day inverters and the ZRGP battery systems. I'm really looking forward to putting these units to test. So I've got one here in the lab, and we're going to put some big loads on this thing and test that 10 second overlay function. Um, that's going to be interesting. And uh, I'm going to look forward to doing the unboxing of the, the small um, modular battery for you know, generic applications for any inverter. So thanks for bringing those along to the lab. Ah, oh, my pleasure. Good. Now I'm just looking forward to great reviews. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Jerry.